Hey, I'm Rachel. This is my friend Calix. They're from Ikea, and by the end of this video, we will be taking you from basic storage shelf to stylish storage bench. Let's go. A very important step here, you do need a paintbrush. <laughs> hmm. Color to be decided. This item typically retails for $89.99, but I just found one off of Marketplace for only $40, and it's already built for me. I'm super happy with this find because if you're not familiar, I'm working on this series called Project Profit, where I upcycle used furniture and sell it, giving all profits to charity. Here I have the four cubby Calyx shelf unit, and the upcycle I have for you today could work on any color for the single row Calyx units. All right, just before we dive in, let's go over the design plan. I wanna take the Calyx unit and actually flip it on its side to utilize as a storage bench. So by adding a top piece with a hinge, we'll be able to use the shelves as cubbies within the storage bench. To give it some visual interest, I wanna add some decorative paneling to the front and overall give it a fresh coat of paint. Color to be decided. To prep our piece, I first wanna sand the whole thing. And luckily for me, I have access to all of the leftover materials we have from the huge collection of DIYs and makeovers seen here on the Sorry Girls channel. And I'm trying to save money whenever possible. The reason I'm sanding all of this now is because it will help create a more porous surface when we go to add our new paint, as well as the decorative paneling. And here I have a 120 grit paper attached to my orbital sander. Now I'm not trying to remove all of this coating, but just rough it up, you can see the difference. All right, so the surface is rough and our piece is prepped, but I just realized I need more MDF than what we have in our storage room. So let's go to the hardware store. And one positive is that I can also get them to cut it for me. Okay, I'm back and I just went ahead and started to label some of our cut pieces. The MDF that I've chosen is 5 eighths in thickness and I got all of these from a piece that cost me $50, which unfortunately is going to cut into our profits just a little bit, but overall, this is still a really inexpensive bench to make, so. All of these started in a four by eight sheet, and unfortunately, I couldn't get three lengths from that sheet alone, so I did have to cut the base piece into two separate parts, but that's okay, because we'll be able to hide those seams later on, and I'm ready to add that now, so let's do it. To adhere these pieces, I'm gonna go in with some melamine glue, and luckily for me, we already have some in our storage room. So this stuff is designed for bonding porous substrates like MDF, particle board, and other synthetic materials. So this is gonna be perfect to adhere to our Calyx unit. Oh no, oh, I got my sleeve. I got the sleeve, oh no. Okay. Stand by. Now I'm just gonna put some weight on top while it dries. Okay, let's move on. Don't look in that drawer. We know that I wanna add some decorative paneling to the front of our bench. But before I go to trace onto this, I actually wanna make a template of an arch so that we can make them as symmetrical as possible. Okay, now to trace out our arch, there's two ways we can go about this. There's the string compass technique, which I've shown you in the past, or we can just trace something round. And that's what I'm gonna do right now. This is not a job for a girl with shaky hands. Before I go to trace our template, I'm gonna break this into four quadrants and then I'm gonna center our template within those. Mm -hmm. 
To cut these arches, I'm going in with both the circular saw and the jigsaw. Starting with the circular saw, I'm using this to cut the straight sides of the arches and then using the jigsaw to cut the rounded areas. You could definitely use just a jigsaw for all of this, but remember, your girl's got shaky hands, so we're just gonna, we're gonna do both. Sorry to be interrupting this regular scheduled programming, but we have an exciting announcement. Guys, we're launching a new show. Ah! Come hang out with us every Saturday morning from the workshop floor. Watch us dish out unfiltered opinions on all things design, tackle DIY challenges, and answer your burning questions. This new show is a fusion of community and creativity and just a new way to interact with the slower girls behind the scenes. And the first episode is this Saturday, so you don't want to miss it. Mm -hmm. If you're not there, I am going to be a little disappointed. Guys, don't disappoint Rochelle. Are you kidding me? <laughs> it's your new favorite Saturday morning plans from the workshop floor. All right, now let's get back to my video. Okay. <laughs> all right, all the arches are cut and it is looking so good. I have a little bit of frayed edges to take care of, so I'm going to hit that with some sandpaper. And I'm going in with a 100 grit on a kind of round sanding block. If you got glue spillage, like me, just clean that up with a damp rag. All right, the decal is on and it's looking good, but it needs to dry for a little bit. So while that happens, I'm gonna go hit those areas on the base with some wood filler. Now I'm just grabbing this nice little piece of scrap wood to make some legs. This is a two inch piece of pine that I'm trimming down with my circular saw. Once the wood filler has completely dried, I'm just gonna sand it smooth. All right, very happy with the progress made on the build so far, but I'm done for today. Tomorrow, we prime. When painting MDF, it's important to mention that you'd ideally want to use an oil or shellac based primer. I prefer shellac based as it just dries faster, but these primers do a better job at actually sealing the material. MDF is very porous, it likes to warp, it likes to soak up water, so don't skip this part. So I've just laid out a bunch of paint color swatches and spent some time exploring my options. And I've narrowed it down to four different colors and I've rendered those onto my design here. I don't know guys, I don't know. Right now in the storage room, we actually have a bunch of leftover spray paint cans in this kind of deep orange color that I think could be really nice. And it would be nice to use something that we already have, but I don't know if I wanna to commit to the orange. I'm also thinking this dusty rose color could be nice, kind of going for more of a pastel look. Another more neutral option, we could obviously go kind of like a light cream off-white color, or another maybe more neutral but still color option would be this kind of slate blue. <sighs> I'm definitely leaning towards one of the color choices, maybe orange, maybe blue. I actually think this could be a nice idea to ask our Instagram followers what color they think this could be through a poll. If you are following us on Instagram, we are at the Sorry Girls. I'm gonna get this posted and let's see what they think. Okay, so I have all the stories posted, but I think I actually wanna take this a step further. You just sit right there. Okay, so as we know, this is for Project Profit, which means I will be selling the piece, but instead of putting it on Marketplace like I normally might, I thought it would be fun to offer it out to our local Sorry Girls 
audience. So if you are in Toronto or the GTA and you like what you just saw and are maybe in the market for a storage bench, I would love to sell this piece to you. I'm gonna let these roll out for the rest of today and hopefully by tomorrow morning we will have a pink color chosen and hopefully someone also wants to buy it. Come on, it's gonna be a nice piece, I promise. Good morning, our poll results are in and I woke up this morning leaning a bit towards one color. I don't know if you can tell which. Call it manifesting, if you will. It didn't work, actually, so we won't be painting the unit orange today. The color that won is the slate blue, which I'm also very excited about. So let's head back to the store and pick up some fresh paint. Pretty color. Um, I should probably put an apron on. Much better. All right, let's get painting. And I chose to use this higher quality scuff defense paint. It has a semi-gloss finish and this will ensure maximum durability. A Twinkie? Yeah. Is that what you're offering me? Yeah. Don't they taste like chemicals? Now that the paint is fully dried, to finish this piece off, I grabbed some leftover hinges and just lined those up evenly with the bench top, making some pilot holes for my screws to go into. I did the same to attach the legs, this time going in with two inch screws from the inside of the bench. Okay, I am so excited to show you guys the finished piece, but before I do that, I have an exciting announcement that it did sell to one of our local audience members for $250. Their name is AXA. Thank you so much for contributing to the cause. Once we remove the cost of materials, you did bring us that much closer to our $3,000 mark. And if you've been on this journey with me, you know that 2,000 of which has already been donated. And I'm gearing up to make the next donation of just over $1,000 two days for girls. There is a link in the bio for more information and thank you for the suggestions. Keep leaving those comments which charitable causes and nonprofits you think Project Profit Money should go to. And now, the moment we've all been waiting for. Let's take a look at the storage bench. Talk about a full transformation with this upcycle. I love this piece for both its form and function, and I hope you do too. Especially you, Aksa. Thank you so much again for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you enjoyed this IKEA hack, I got another IKEA storage solution for you. See you next time.